lovely people, let's see what's new in Mabe today. First up is the construction across from Westgate Hills. Look, those dark clouds are making me feel like today was probably not the best day to record. But we shall press on. Hopefully, I can get to all the sites before the rain starts pouring. Just a reminder, we learned some time ago that this construction site is Barnet Logistics, a distribution hub at North Bank, a 100-acre multi-phased industrial development located on the North Bank of the retrained Montego River. You can check out Barnet Limited's website listed in the description box to learn more. I've been tracking this site for some time now and I have quite a few videos on it you can also check those out if you want to see how it looked before as you can see they've started constructing another section there's even a little shop here where the workers can purchase snacks didn't see that the last time i stopped by i decided to go around to the side i normally record by but as you can see is overgrown now with shrubs so i can't go as close to the fence as i would like to do you see the sign indicating that Estuary Meadows is in this direction? Cool. I've done a few videos on that construction project. You can check them out if you want to learn more. Now, I don't see any noticeable changes to this project at the entrance of Westgate Hills. This is Ushore Warehousing. On to our next site. I got held up by the rain again. That happened last week on our first episode for this year at least of what's new in montego bay you can check out that video if you have not already so i had to take shelter then i'm going to go by the racket club condominium construction site here we are but unfortunately this is another site where there hasn't been much change it was still raining but not as heavy as before so i tried to get as much footage as i could given the circumstances i'm here trying to find a place to stand where passing vehicles won't splash me but you know some of them don't really care not to splash you as we learned in our last visit about the racket club condominium construction we visited their website and we learned that the developers are Borea Limited. The architect is Virtuoso. Four residences plus penthouses ranges from 1,200 square feet to 3,600 square feet. They will have a world-class spa and racket club complete with cutting edge facilities. They will also have expansive grounds and round the clock security. After I finished, I decided to walk down to the crossroads to see if I can get a taxi back in town and I was struck by this view. There's a beautiful view up here. can even see Cornwall College. That looks like Cornwall College, right? Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? On my way to Harmony Beach Park, I saw some work being done over here on the side of North Gully. What do you think is being done here? Let me know in the comments. I have a few possibilities that I'm going to share with you and you let me know which one you think is more likely. Number one, they're fixing the North Gully, extending Harmony Beach Park, connecting Harmony Beach Park to Harbor City Shopping Center adding a boardwalk or all of the above let me know in the comments they seem to have added some ropes over this side i think to cordon off that area i hope to god that people haven't been going in the water over that side because it's obviously not open for swimming and it's supposed to be very deep 
anyways i think the security guards have been telling people not to do that but you know that some people just had a earring oh my gosh even a mattress in the gully really people not very mindful not very demure <laughs> i went downtown i know some people call it beer like my bay, but i call it downtown then i went by harmony beach park and i realized there were no vendors on the outside like there usually are and then i saw the signs all over front back side everywhere let's see how long that's going to last then i passed this iron light post very svelte very svelte and tall i decided to capture it as well i don't know why here is a close-up yeah i continued to make my way on jimmy cliff boulevard then i realized there is a sign up for the vista montego bay hotel or apartment complex that is being constructed i can't seem to find the construction site let me see i visited this site uh, i visited this section i think it was last year and i tried again this year but me no know. I just can't seem to find the construction sites. Me no see no construction I go on. I asked around on that day and no one was able to direct me to where the site was. But I hear that construction is going on and they even have a website up and now there's a billboard up. But for the website, I don't really think that means anything because some places tend to put up a website even before they start constructing. I can't seem to locate the site, so if you know job scripts and tell me, send me an email. Here's the email address up. So I'm bringing you closer so you can see the billboard better. So here's the close up. You can even see the number. Just pause it and take it down if you want an apartment. <laughs> trying to make sure i don't capture anybody in the footage it's difficult because people are always passing by i can't stop them from walk you're crazy so i wait on them to walk by and then i start recording again <laughs> of course you can tell that it is beside the old fort craft market on jimmy cliff boulevard or probably you can't tell but let me just show you around so that you can have an idea of the location So that's the location yeah yeah that's harmony beach park across the street um the side part at least this garbage just thrown in the middle of the island or whatever you want to call this place on jimmy cliff boulevard the tourism capital of jamaica crazy work somebody needs to come and clean up this it don't look nice at all don't like it don't like it at all now I'm showing you some shots outside of Witter Village. I took this footage about like a couple weeks ago. I realized that there is some construction going on right here. Somebody close by told me that it is Wendy's that they're building. You're right beside KFC. I don't know if that is true, but if that is the case, it will be Wendy's right beside KFC. Then I was trying to find the site where they are constructing Price Mart. And I did not ask anyone. No, I think I remember somebody telling me that it was beside Wita Village. Probably in a comment section. I don't know. Somebody told me. But apparently it's not right beside Wita Village. So if you know, let me know in the comments. All right. Look here, I'm going to stand up here for how long I could not get a taxi back in town in the hot sun had to put up my umbrella but i still captured some footage for you guys put down the tripod and just put the phone on it and tried to get some shots and then look westford court hotel they were working on the gate and i asked them when i was coming back not this time when i was coming back around if it is open and they say yes they couldn't tell me when it was open because it's just workers working on the gate they don't know and i did not want to go into the hotel and ask them but yeah it appears to be open so if that is the case good if not then it would be open soon because i see a lot of work things going on inside that area all right give me a shot of old hospital park look at this glass thing broken oops all right and then i wanted to while i'm 
on Jimmy Cliff Boulevard is actually to get to Margaritaville just to give you an update on what's going on there. And of course, I'm giving you a wide shot of that. Construction still taking place, not finished. So it doesn't look much different from the last visit. I'll probably put a shot of the last visit here, but I guess you can check out the video. It wasn't like a few weeks ago, probably a month ago. Yeah, you can find that video. Let me show you what it looks like. Trying to get another artistic shot here. Kind of get crafty with recording. Of course, as I said, the tripod is is a little flimsy, but it works. You know, it works still. Close up of Margaritaville construction site. Yeah, you know, it's across from Coral Cliffs. I'll show you that as well. And as you can see, look up in the sky, you say dark clothes them. Yeah, Korean boat for boss. And then me I go get stuck. But you'll see shortly. Enjoy the sounds of the traffic. It's looking like it's going to pour. <sighs> Walking back around, decided to get a close up of the hotel sign, and then the rain started. I'm getting stuck. Uh, old hospital park, decided to show you some shots, some proof. Yeah, that rain was pouring. I heard a lady that's working there, or she was, I think, working on some craft items, and she was saying that rain fall down there every day. Oh, look at North Gully. Look at North Gully. Oh my! And look at the garbage right here. Yeah, why is it put the back on nasty so? Why you go just find one garbage bin now? They took the garbage under the fence. Look nasty man. Then if you clean it up, and Jamaicans need to stop being nasty. Welcome or welcome back to Artsy Island Girl Jamaican Vlogs. I'm Artsy, and this is our development series where we focus on developments taking place in Montego Bay. Jamaica and across the world. If you're interested in these types of videos, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and share. Now let's get into it. Another addition to the education scene should be coming to Montego Bay in December this year. According to Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett, the recently discussed Gastronomy Academy will be opened on time for the tourist season. The Academy will be located on the grounds of the Montego Bay Convention Center. A commenter asked me to check up on the National Baker site in a recent video, so here I am. The National Baker Company is constructing a $6.7 billion, 120,000 square foot manufacturing plant in the Catherine Hall area. We visited this site several times before. This new facility will generate 75 direct jobs and produce over 3,600 loaves per hour, serving regions like St. James, Trelawney, St. Anne, Hanover, Westmoreland, and St. Elizabeth. In one of our previous updates, we learned that the plant was scheduled for completion in 2025 and is paused for FDA approval, positioning the company for international growth. I wonder if they are still working with that completion date. The St. James Municipal Corporation is launching the Mobe Step Up Program to clear St. James streets of derelict vehicles and nuisances. The plan is to target roadside businesses. In April, the St. James Municipal Corporation and state agencies met with business operators to explain the goals and ended up granting them a two-month compliance period. Now that the grace period is over, Vernon emphasized the cleanup's urgency. The step-up program aims to create a cleaner Montego Bay by removing old vehicles and items from the sidewalk, garages, and other roadside businesses. He also highlighted a dengue outbreak as one of the reasons for going ahead with the step up program as we need to eliminate hazardous items that breed mosquitoes now residents must secure their belongings as non-compliant items will be impounded or dumped complaints have been received from several areas including Perry street and mount salem so they will be addressing that 
The St. James Municipal Corporation will collaborate with the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Jamaica Fire Brigade, National Solid Waste Management Authority, St. James Health Services, and the National Environment and Planning Agency to enforce compliance. Now, by summer 2024, Avelo, I did not check the pronunciation, Avelo, Avelo, I think it's Avelo. <laughs> by summer 2024, Avelo plans to introduce its first international Caribbean route starting in December, just in time for winter travel. Avelo will offer twice weekly flights from Hartford to Cancun and Cancun to Cancun and Montego Bay, Jamaica. The Montego Bay flights begin on November 16 and Cancun, why that sounds so weird? The name name. Flights start on November 20th. One-way fares for Montego Bay and Cancun will start at $52. The expansion reflects Avelo's growing footprint since its inception three years ago. Here are 10 things you need to know about the Montego Bay Bypass Project. If you're interested in these types of videos, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, share, and subscribe. Number one, contract signing. In 2018, Carl Samuda announced that the government signed a contract with China Harbor Engineering Company, Czech, for the construction of the Montego Bay Bypass, with work expected to start by 2019-2020 financial year. Number two, project delays. I've seen quite a few articles indicating that construction started in 2019, but based on what I've researched, the project was supposed to begin in 2019. But according to Ivan Anderson, the managing director of the National Road Operating and Constructing Company, NROC, in this GIS article published in 2020, due to COVID, Construction of the proposed Montego Bay Bypass in St. James should commence in 2022 instead. I'm not sure if the articles that reference 2019 as the start date are actually referring to preliminary work. What do you think? I've listed my sources in the description box. You can check them out for yourself and then come back and let me know. Number three, completion date. The Montego Bay Bypass project is currently slated to be completed in March 2028. That's very specific. I say currently because it was originally slated for completion earlier. Delays have already occurred, COVID, because initially they said it would take 36 months. So I'm thinking more than likely this date is also subject to be changed due to unforeseen circumstances. We never know what may happen in the coming years. Now, what's your prediction? Will it be sooner or later? Number four, economic impact. This major project is set to open new lands in South St. James, driving up land prices and spurring new developments. However, businesses along the old routes might experience reduced traffic and customer flow. What are your thoughts on this trade-off? Number five, length of the roadway. The project consists of 25 kilometers of roadway, 15 kilometers from Ironshore to Bogue, and 10 kilometers from Montego Bay to Mount Pelio. Number six, what is the difference between the Montego Bay Bypass and the Montego Bay Perimeter Road Project? According to this article on NROC's website, NROC, which happens to be the organization that is overseeing the project, the Montego Bay Bypass is part of the larger Montego Bay Perimeter Road project, which also includes the rehabilitation of Barnett Street, West Green Avenue, the Long Hill Bypass, and a comprehensive drainage study. So until they tell us otherwise, let's just work with that. What do you think? Number seven, design build approach. So the Montego Bay Perimeter Road project uses a design build approach to construction, which involves one team 
one contract, meaning a single company handles both design and construction, thereby simplifying the process, leading to better communication as designers and builders work closely together, reducing misunderstanding and delays. It also leads to faster completion because the design and construction phases can overlap, speeding up the project. And then cost control because the budget is managed more effectively with the entire team working together now this is different from the traditional methods design bid build which separates design and construction often leading to longer timelines and potential conflicts and then you have the construction management approach which involves a construction manager early on but design and construction are still handled by different entities do you agree that the design build approach is the best approach let me know in the comments number eight funding the government of Jamaica is funding the project. In this Gleaner article, Prime Minister Holness is quoted as saying, I'm particularly proud of the fact that Jamaica's fiscal situation is such that we do not need to borrow to implement the project. Number nine, local workforce. In the same article reference above, it is noted that the project requires a minimum of 90% Jamaican labor for unskilled construction work and a minimum of 50% of skilled Jamaican workers for technical works. The contracting agency, CHECK, will work in collaboration with Hartrust NSDA to develop and implement a training program for the transfer of knowledge and technology. And number 10. Number 10 possibly the longest bridge in jamaica on the office of the prime minister website the prime minister is quoted as saying in relation to the montego bay perimeter road project construction is now underway forming the foundation of possibly the longest bridge ever built in jamaica this project is going to be a landmark project for infrastructure in jamaica we intend to complete this in record time but we are also going to be opening up many new corridors for development for more details check out the sources linked in the description box see you in the next one as minister i can categorically state that there's no such thing it is absolutely fake news. I've been tracking oil exploration in Jamaica since 2022 when I did my first video. With the recent rumors about oil being found in Jamaica, belief that there is a cover-up and Minister Vaz saying that's fake news, I think an update is overdue. Now, I'm no expert on the topic and would never claim to be, but I'll make an attempt to understand where the misunderstanding may lie. Over the last few weeks, there have been a lot of talk about oil being found in Jamaica. I've seen videos referencing an Observer article published in July from which readers have concluded that oil has been found. Now, I didn't do an update video because I didn't see any such update on United Oil and Gas's website and the last time I checked, they were still looking for a drilling partner. Then Minister Vaz came out saying it was fake news and I figured that the uproar would fizzle down after that. But then I saw a video today of a lady talking very excitedly about the prospects of an oil find in Jamaica and the comments under the video took that as proof that oil was indeed found in Jamaica. So here's what I think is happening. They've been searching for oil for some time now. I'm not getting into the history. Watch this video if you want more info. Plus, I have a whole playlist on the oil exploration in Jamaica. But the most recent area of interest is called Walton Morant Basin off the south coast of Jamaica. It stretches from the south of Walton Basin in Westmoreland to Morant Bay in St. Thomas. They saw some positive indicators that there may be oil in that area. Now, what are positive indicators? So digging for oil is expensive and them can just go dig everywhere and try to look for oil. So they have to look for signs that indicate that oil is more than likely in that area. Once they have enough signs, they can invest in drilling to confirm it. Now, what are the signs? If there is source rock there, that means there is possibly oil there. 
A source rock is a rock that has organic material like dead plants and tiny animals buried under layers for millions of years. Over time, with lots of pressure and heat, this organic matter can transform into what they call hydrocarbons, i.e. oil and gas. Now, if oil is formed, it needs a place to store it. It needs rocks that would act like a sponge and soak it up. Good storage rocks like sandstone or limestone have lots of tiny spaces like a sponge where oil can collect. These rocks are called reservoir rocks, so they look for that also. Now, if oil was formed there and is still there, then there must be a trap that's holding it there, right? Just like you have a container with a cap to hold water. There needs to be a natural trap that stops the oil from escaping. This could be a folded layer of rock, like an arch, called an anticline. I think that's a pronunciation. There may be a crack in the earth that's been sealed or other shapes that naturally hold oil in place. So if they see these geological structures, then that's another sign that there may be oil and gas. Now, if they see a little oil seeping up to the surface of the earth, that again is another sign. To see some of these features, they do geological surveys like surface mapping and sediment analysis, and they use geophysical methods like seismic surveys and magnetic and gravity surveys. I explain some of these in another video. Now, if they have enough signs or positive indicators, then they need to confirm it by drilling. But as I said before, oil drilling is expensive, so they need a partner to share the costs. And for the last couple of years, they have been trying to find one. They call it the formal process. And in order to sell the very expensive investment to someone or a company, you have to show that it is a lucrative venture because who are going to take up all this money and invest without having an idea of how much profit they can make or that you have done enough research to find positive indicators that you worked out how much barrels of oil you could possibly get from that area and put a monetary value on it. They have to package all that information to present to and entice possible investors. I think that is one of the reasons they had that investor evening that the article mentioned earlier this year. If you go to the company's website now and go to the press releases section, you will see a new upload on August 27, 2024, clarifying the oil discovery speculation. It states, United confirms that it has drilled no wells in the Walton Morant license and therefore no commercial oil or gas discovery has been made. You can check out the website if you want for yourself. I left the link in the description box. So that's what I think may be happening. They're still looking for a partner, but their excitement seems to be making people think that they have already found oil and have commenced drilling. That's my two cents what's yours and if you want to learn more about oil exploration in jamaica check out my entire playlist